Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone who is tuned online today. Um, just as Pastor has said, my name is Patrick Oyaro, and uh, I'm a public health specialist. But most important is I love the Lord. I'm born again. And for the next 30 to 40 minutes, uh, I would like to share with us on matters mental health. And someone out there may be asking himself or herself, why mental health? And why mental health in church? Um, you will be answered in a few minutes. I would like to point out that this is our family month and uh, the family remains to be the basic unit of the church and the unit uh, of the community. And so when individuals who make the family have issues, then the family will have issues. And if the family has issues, the church will have issues or the community will have issues. And that's why it's important for us to talk about issues that affect family. All of us who tune to the various media would attest to the fact that we have news, but a lot of the news we have is not good news, is bad news. And what, what do I mean by bad news? You tune to radio or TV and you hear conflicts and really bad conflicts. You watch and you hear about job losses. You hear about threats of more job losses. You hear about violence. You hear about homicide, murders. You hear about suicide. Those are not good news at all. I am not saying that there is no good news, but the truth is that we have news that is not good out there. And a lot of these, a lot of these things are related to the state of mind of individuals. And that is where mental health comes in. Our theme is for us to advance to the next level. Moving to the next level. But definitely, I don't think any one of us desires to move to a worse next level. All of us desire to move to a better or the best next level. But with all these things that I'm talking about that are not good, before we move to that better next level, there must be restoration. Move from that bad level back to your normal state and then advance to a better level. And that's why it's an opportunity for us to discuss about our health and specifically mental health because that can deter us from moving to the better or the best level. I am doing this in the context or under a Christian platform. And I'm standing in church. And so definitely I have to remind us about God's original plan. And God's original plan in creation was perfect. Man had good intent, God had good intention for man when he placed him in the garden. God's purpose for creating us was to worship him but it was also to help in the co-creation. And that is why Adam was given a mandate to take care of the creation and the environment. God's other plan was to fellowship with man. God's other plan was to allow fellowship between man and allow man to be each other's keeper. And that's why Cain was expected to be Abel's keeper but it did not fulfill that purpose of God's creation. The Bible tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. That still tells us about God's good plan for us in Psalms 139. That we are made in the image of God and have dominion. That still reinforces good, uh, the good plan that God has for us. That our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. 
I don't think God would want that body or that temple of the Holy Spirit to be corrupted. We are given the promise of being healed by the stripes of the Lord Jesus. That still reinforces the good plan that God has for us and our health. And in spite of what has happened, caused by us, or caused by people related to us, I am still here to submit that God has a good plan for us. He still has the, the, the best plan for us. Unfortunately, just as from the beginning, as Adam deviated, as Cain deviated, we may have deviated in one way or another. We have deviated against self. We have done bad things to ourselves that has caused harm into us. And I will get into that. We have done things that have destroyed the environment, yet God gave us the opportunity to take care of the environment. We have done bad things against each other instead of being each other's keepers. How have we handled expectations and non-expectations? Things have happened in our lives, but what criteria have we used to handle those things that have happened in our lives? And of course, I would also say that apart from us doing harm to ourselves, apart from our friends and relatives and other people doing bad things to us, our enemies have also done bad things to us. And the chief enemy is the devil who has influenced things upon our lives that have affected us physically, socially, spiritually, and mentally. We have a role to play. We have an opportunity to prevent harm or to prevent disease, including mental health issues coming upon us. We have that opportunity. And as I use the Christian platform, I would say that staying tuned with God and his teaching is important for us to prevent certain things from happening to us. Having faith in God and acknowledging his power thereof remains very strong in preventing some things happening to us. Two, fulfilling the mandate given to us during creation by God remains critical to us. And sometimes we look at the teachings in the Bible to be just spiritually oriented. But I, I would want to say that a lot of teachings are here to help us while we are here on earth. And they have a lot of physical benefit to us. When Samson was set apart as a Nazarite, there were a lot of physical benefits that he was to get apart from the spiritual benefit as a Nazarite. When he was told not to get into wine, when he was told not to associate with a carcass, there is physical benefit of not associating with a carcass. What else do you expect when you associate with the carcass? So, as we think about God's plan for us spiritually, a lot of teachings in the Bible are there to help us uh, to remain physically healthy. Taking care of the environment, we have to remain to take care of the environment to prevent diseases, including mental health. And of course, I talk about what I see day to day. Sometimes I get so frustrated when I see someone throwing bottles out of the window of a vehicle or sweets, pepper sweets, you just consume and you throw it there. Banana pills you consume and throw there. You're spoiling the environment. Someone's going to step on that banana peel and crash down and break his head because of you. But we do it. We have to go back to the basics and do what God expects us to do. What about what do we consume? What do we intake? What do we take in? 
It can be physical by eating. It can be by sight. It can be by hearing. What do you spew out from your mouth? So what we do as individuals is very important. Self-care is critical. Self-care is critical. So it's good for us to know about how to prevent health. And health, as defined by World Health Organization, is not just the physical absence of disease, or it's not just the absence of physical disease, but it's wholesome health. You have to be physically healthy, spiritually healthy, socially healthy, mentally healthy, wholesome, the whole of you. And so if you are physically healthy, but in the mind, your mind has issues, is corrupted, then you are not healthy. Most of the times we think if someone is physically healthy, that's enough. But remember, your mind and without getting into a lot of medical terminology, I would just use the mind, should be able to instruct your body to react in a certain way, to react in a certain way for you to be able to act. If a lion comes and approaches you, then your mind should be able to tell you that, my friend, this one you cannot manage. You need to run away. But if it's not a lion and it's a small dog threatening to <laughs> bite you, your mind will also tell you that this one you can manage. Take a stick and chase it away. So, there is a collaboration here. There's a collaboration here. So the mind remains to be very important. And that's why if there's anything that will affect your mind, will affect your psychology, will affect your mental state, then it needs to be addressed. So things that deal with our emotions, that deal with our psychology, that deal with our mind, that deal with our brain, are things we are going to refer to today as mental health issues or mental health disorders when there's a problem. And I'm here to tell us that mental health can affect anybody. Anybody. None of us is immune to mental health issues. And all ages would be affected. Parents, when your child is not going to school and he doesn't want to say why he doesn't want to go to school, there's a reason why he or she doesn't want to go to school. Don't just pick the cane and cane the child that you have to go to school. You need to be able to sit and talk and find out what is the problem with this child. It could be that there is some fear in school that has been caused by either the classmates who are bullying the child or the teacher is extra harsh or maybe he's, the child himself is not doing his homework or is doing some things and fears going to school. Or maybe mom and dad are fighting and the child wants to protect mom. And the only way to protect mom is to hang around at home. And those are mental health issues. There's some fear. But he creates a way of reacting to that fear to help solve a problem. Adolescents, as they grow up, the body is changing. You find them secluded, teen daughters and teen men. They start to do certain particular things because they are careful about how they appear, how their body is. They may end up even not eating well because someone told them that they are fat in school and they want to reduce weight. And you're wondering, this person is not eating or this one is excessively eating, what could be the reason? So mental health affects everyone. Have you not watched news that young children are committing suicide? Then why? Because there is a mental health issue. We've had even cases where a child has just been, rid a, a, a girl has been ridiculed because of her menses. Maybe she was in school 
and she did not have sanitary pads, and then she soiled her clothes, and she's ridiculed. Already it gets into the brain. She gets stressed up and thinks of something weird next. Young adults, it's time to get married, and the pressures are from all quarters, right? Everyone is saying you are creating a jam. Mother-in-law, or oh, not mother-in-law, you're not married yet. The mother and your parents are putting pressure. You need to get married. Relationship issues. You feel rejected. You approach this person and no. Two months, you've broken down. Three months, you've broken down. Relationship issues. They are bound to get into the mind and create mental health issues. Parents and spouses, childbirth, yes, you got married one year down the line, two years down the line, there is no child. It gets into the brain. Mental health issues arise. Parenting, your own children, you cannot manage. Or you tell them this, they don't want to do this. You feel that they have rebelled against you. Haven't you seen parents crying because of their own children? It gets into the mind. It can result to mental health disorders. Finances within the family bound to cause issues. And even old age, mental health issues would come. And generally, let me talk about work. Some of us are employed as workers, but it is very possible that the mental health issue that is affecting you at a different level in your family can then come and affect you at your workplace. And I will get to that as we continue. The most common mental health issue is just is what we call stress. We take it so lightly, stress. How many have never been stressed? Anyone here who has never been stressed? If you've never been stressed at all, then um, I don't know what to say. You're very lucky. If you've never got any iota of stress, then you're very lucky. Stress is most common. When the pressures from all quarters, any quarters, overwhelm you, that you're not even sure what to do next. I would term that as stress in the simplest way. And acute stress is something that is for a short term and you should be able to manage it. And don't look at stress to all, to, all the time to be negative. Stress can be from positive quarters. Maybe you've got, you've got a new job. You've got a new job, you've been given new assignments, and bang! you get worried about how you're going to execute this. You've never done this job before. And there you get, start getting worried. Am I really going to manage? That is stress, but it's not stress from a bad thing. You've got a new job. Or you used to stay in a bed seat and now you have a what? You are supposed to move out. How many like moving and changing houses? I know not all of us love that. You have to go get a lorry, you have to go get this and move from one place to another. Even just changing houses. It is a good thing moving from that bed sitter to a two-bedroom house. But the thought of moving out brings some stress. What else? We have other good examples. Having a children is a good thing. But if they stress your life, they put pressures on you. So stressful moments are not necessarily from bad things, but a majority would be negative. But I would want to tell us that if you don't manage short-term or acute stress, then it builds up to what we call chronic stress. So it is stress for a long time. And when it progresses and it becomes stress for a long time, it then now builds to more problems, more disorders, and that would be something like depression. So depression may not just come bang. It may start from acute stress. You don't manage the acute stress, 
and then it builds up to become chronic stress, which brings things like depression. And when that happens, it can affect a lot of you. Like, um, it can affect a lot of your systems or many of your, your body systems. It would lead to your immunity going down. Someone who gets excessively stressed will affect your, what we call cardiovascular system. It would bring fear in your life. It may bring what you call phobia. You see some things and your heart rate is just beating faster. You see somebody and suddenly you cannot breathe well. Your respiratory system is affected. Stress alone can make a family not to be able to get a child or get sire a child. And I'm talking about this because sometimes the people would come to you and say, oh, we've been married for these many years and we've not been able to get a baby, but it's because of the stressful moments that you have is not giving you a conducive environment to be able to get the baby. And it may be nothing else. You cannot sleep. Instead of sleeping your six to eight hours, you sleep three hours. That also has its own effects. You sleep less. In future, you are more likely to have heart-related conditions. That has been studied. If I talk on a medical point of view, that if you have disrupted sleep or you sleep less, it can increase your chances of having heart conditions. So I'm telling us that if people have acute stress, they need to be managed so that they don't build up to be chronic stress or lead to things like depression. I'll come back to depression. We have fears and phobias. How many of us have fears and phobias, yeah? You are, your young child or young, your son can play with insects, but you as the parent, when you see the insects, you even start having, you start scratching yourself, you start, uh, you want to run away, you, you get problems. I know people have those issues. If there's a lizard or a, ha a rat in the house, everyone will run away. And probably your four-year boy is the one who's going to come and chase it. How many fear heights? You can't even board a plane, or you can't even go any height. You can't go to second floor and third floor. It's trouble. What about what we call obsessive compulsive disorder? You can wash your hands five times. You've washed your hands. When you're going just to almost serving, you go back, you wash again. Yep. Or you lock your door, you board your motorbike, and then after a few meters, you stop the motorbike guy, you go back to the house, you want to lock the door again, and you can do it three times. That's called OCD. It has its benefits, yes. You don't really need treatment, but it is in the mind. We have what are called mood disorders, and I will try to simplify it, that we have what is called depression. Depression, apart from stress leading to depression, you may just have depression. And when you have depression, your, your hormones just make you have a low feeling, a low feeling. Think of any low feeling. Sadness, you don't want to go out, you don't want to talk to anybody. And sometimes we may be quick to judge people, not knowing that they're actually going into depression. And it takes me back to being a brother's keeper. Is Patrick, if Patrick used to greet me and happily before, and we used to go out and hang out together, and suddenly things change. Don't just jump into conclusions that now Patrick has got a better job, is snobbing me, or now he feels that I'm lesser. It could be that Patrick is undergoing some depression. And so things in his life has, have just changed. And you as a brother's keeper, instead of jumping to conclusion, can you find an opportunity and talk to Patrick if he's not rich to you and find out what is going on in his life? And already as I'm talking about this, I'm giving us some of the ways 
we can address uh, some of the stressful situations or the mental health disorders. So generally someone who has depression is withdrawn and low and probably just wants to go and sleep and have his own time and doesn't want to talk to anybody. He will not even pick your call. He doesn't want to talk. He doesn't want to eat. The opposite of depression is mania. Now mania you are, shh. Depression you are low. Mania you are, high. And people have mania who'd come up with serious things. They will build the castles in the air. They will be out there jumpy and happy and everything. They will speak big. That's the total opposite of depression. And there are people who have both changing. Today, they are depressed. Tomorrow, they are manic. And that is what we call bipolar disorder. And so, you just need to understand these people and be able to help them out in their situations when they are low or when they are in their hype excitement moment. And then we have schizophrenia, which is different and has its own characteristics and there are different types. I don't want to get into that. What are the facilitators of mental health issues? Fear, just fear. If you are just fearful, physical disease and processes. Currently, the greatest disease that is disturbing us is COVID-19. And it has caused a lot of issues I'm going to share on that. Natural occurrences, unresolved conflicts will make mental health issues worsen. Inability to meet obligations or achieve expectations can make us to have mental health issues. But some that I've talked about can also be through generations and familial. Probably if the high chances of this family having this condition, the high chances of another person having the same condition. And of course, as I have said, that the enemy is out there to also cause trouble. We have spiritual evil possession that can make our mind to be deranged and not be able to perform well and have severe mental issues. Let me briefly talk about Bible examples that Moses in his situation where he had killed somebody and also the situation of leadership when he was leading the Israelites. He had a lot of stressful moments. And we, are, we know what he did. He broke the tablet. He used the stick and hit the rock very hard. He reacted to the stressful moments because of the leadership. And I'm talking to you as a leader. If you are in leadership position, you have to be careful on how you handle your stressful moments because they can either cause good or cause harm. Queen Esther, during the persecution of her people, David and Saul, the enmity between them, and as leaders, they had stressful moments. And we know what had to be done during their stressful moments. But David was interesting on how he addressed stressful moments. While people were afraid of Goliath to face Goliath, David came courageously. It was a stressful moment for his people. But he came out courageously to address that situation. Joseph, under his brothers, and and a Potiphar's wife. He decided to do what? To flee. A medic probably will try to find out which hormones were working at that time that made him flee. They, we call them what epinephrine and all those things for medics. But when you are stressed, your hormones will either help you to flee or to do what? To fight. He chose to flee at that particular moment because that was the best way to solve that situation. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I am certain they had their stressful moments in the lion's den and fire persecution. The prophets, Abraham, the issue of childbirth and sacrificing that same son 
he had a stressful moment. Frustration of God's power against the other prophets. Elijah went to the level of depression and he said he'd rather die. First Kings chapter 19. He said he would rather die because Ahab's, Ahab's wife was following him and he had to run away. Apostle Paul has gone through a lot of things. I am convinced that Jesus Christ, while on the cross, when he said, Father, take this away from me, that was a stressful moment. So what am I saying is that having that stress is not entirely bad. The question is, how do you solve it so that it doesn't lead to other things? Our current case study, COVID-19, was it avoidable or unavoidable? And I want to tell us that all of us are vulnerable, that no one of, none of us is safe. But how have we reacted? I work in the hospital setup, and people have feared going to the hospital because they think they will get COVID when they go to the hospital. And if you look at the numbers, the numbers went down. Some of us are still in denial that COVID exists, and they say we've not seen COVID in our village, let it come, let me see one, two, three people die, then I'll know COVID is there. And some of us have remained to be careless. Yet God wants us to play our part. COVID has led to physical sickness. And definitely physical sickness of you or your family member is a stressful moment. It is not just physical, it will lead to mental issues. People have lost jobs. People have lost jobs during this COVID season. And loss of job has led to loss of daily bread, has led to loss of housing. People have been moved out of houses, has led to accumulation of debts, has led to children not going to school. All these are stressful moments. And it is good for us to face this and find solutions to this. If you cannot survive alone to address that stressful situation. That is where we expect the church to come in to help where they can. That's where, again, I invoke Brother's Keeper. Have you checked your friend where he has been during this COVID season? Be a Brother's Keeper, be a Sister's Keeper, and let's find a solution to these stressful moments. And I say this has led to increased conflicts. The frustration that is in the house, the reversed roles that have come into the house, the violence that we see, studies show that gender-based violence has increased in the homestead. That is mental health, separation, divorce, death, loss of loved ones is stressful. And there are people who have suddenly got or their conditions have been exacerbated because of loss of life. And a depression that was suppressed has suddenly erupted because of that. And so it's important for us to say the things that have existed. We need to respond well to acute stress. We need to find solutions because stresses and mental health issues have affected us physically. People are not able to eat, not able to sleep well. And have, as, as I have said, behavioral issues, destruction and violence, gender-based violence, family-level issues, public-level issues. I am convinced that whatever was happening in South Africa was also not just physical, but related to the stresses. What about work output? As a doctor, I want you to imagine you've come to my clinic and I had a stressful moment at home. I am bound not to treat you well because of my state of mind. As a banker, how do you treat your clients in your stressful moments? Think of your profession. Your profession. I love teachers, but sometimes you may think that teachers will cane you harder depending on the situation at home. Or they may forgive you. <laughs> if a teacher has a stressful moment at home, when it comes to class, I'm very sure even if you got 99%, you'll get one cane. Those happens. I'm just taking us back that stressful moments, 
mental health issues can take us to the workplace and affect the work output and work quality. It can lead to people taking drugs. Some people who are out there taking drugs uh, and consuming to drugs, it may have been as a result of stressful moments that were not managed. So we have to take care of that. Suicide and murders called homicide. I am certain that no person in his right state of mind will just pick a gun and shoot another person or kill or slaughter another person. If he's not completely possessed by the devil, it would be a mental issue which needs to be looked into. And so we need to stop this. Let's have faith and trust in God for guidance and obedience to God's word. Psalms 43, 4 says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. God has an answer for us. Can we then be realistic in our capabilities? If you're setting your goals in life, uh, don't be too over ambitious. Yes, we are told the sky or beyond the sky is the limit. But humanly speaking, if you cannot carry a 200 kg weight and you want to convince yourself that the sky and above the sky is the limit and you want to try, you'll break yourself. So let's be realistic in our targets and our capabilities. Let's not fear solving conflicts. If you have a conflict with a brother, reach out, solve it before it builds into something else. And that's supported even by the Bible. Facing calamities. Are we able to realign? I sing. I sing gospel music. I thank God that I have a profession that I can rely on. A lot of my colleagues do music and they may not have something else. Now, COVID taught us so hard that if you don't have what we call side hustle, for lack of a better word, you're bound to have issues. If you are employed and you're fired by your employer, do you have something else to rely on? And that's something I would encourage us. Can we realign and re-strategize? Communication, talk to someone. Talk to someone. I know sometimes we fear talking to somebody because we think that our issues will be out there and will cause us more depression. But look for someone and talk and share your ideas. A problem discussed is half solved. Get involved in activities that can help you relax. It will be upon you to look at what can make you relax in a stressful moment, but good activities. Counseling services are available, spiritual and professional. Workplace policies. And I would even talk to employers. Recently, I asked a question, what do you expect your boss to say on a Monday morning when he meets you? Will it be, did you finish the assignment last week as the first thing? Or will, will it be, Caroline, how was your weekend? How is family? We have a new week to start. Counseling services. So workplace policies should be helpful. As I finish, as a Christian, seek guidance from God before resorting to other acceptable means. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. And read Psalms 23. Lastly, Isaiah 41, verses 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you. I will hold you with my righteous hand. God's promise to help you. God bless you.